Do you enjoy making gifts for family and friends? If so, I have three gift ideas for you. Project number one. A cute hanging ornament. This project could be easily personalized to match a person's favorite color or favorite dog breed. The ornament could be hung from a bag, a stroller, a tree, or a rear view mirror. To make this ornament, you will need pet themed fabric, three inch round pieces of wood that are about an eighth inch thick, stencils, paint and paint brushes, a drill or something to make a hole in your ornament, and string or rope to hang the ornament. You will also need Mod Podge or a material like Mod Podge to glue the fabric to the wood. Once you have selected a fabric, you'll want to select matching paint colors. It is best to pick a light color and a dark color. We are going to stencil something on the back of our ornament, so you want to paint one side of the wood your background color and you want to paint the edges of your wood. You can also choose not to paint the wood if you'd like a wood tone background. We'll let our paint dry completely before we move on to the next step. For this ornament I have chosen a different fabric and I'm going to match it with a white back, a black back, and a blue background. I have painted the sides of the wood as well and I'm going to let these dry. Once the paint has dried, you can stencil something cute on the back of your discs. You have to play around with your stencils to see what will fit. On this ornament, I've chosen a black background and I'm going to stencil the word love in white. You'll want to pick two colors that are high contrasting so the writing shows up well. If you've never stenciled before, it's a good idea to tape your stencil down, pick a very thick paint, and put very little paint on your sponge or paintbrush. You want it to kind of go on dry and do several coats. On this ornament, I've decided to go with a blue background and black paint for stenciling the word wolf and a little doggy bone. The cutouts on this stencil are very close together, so I've taped over all the openings that I don't want to paint. It would be very easy for me to have an accident with everything so close together. Fully remove your stencil so it does not slide sideways. When your paint has dried, you'll move on to fussy cutting your fabric. You will want to cut your fabric so that it is a quarter inch bigger than your disc on all sides. We will cover the entire surface of the disc with Mod Podge. You can use a paintbrush, a sponge, or a little spatula to spread your Mod Podge. You just want to get a thin coating all over the back of the disc. I like using this little paint spatula for spreading my glue around. It works real well when you put the fabric on and you can use the flat surface of it to move the air bubbles out. Once you've coated your disc with Mod Podge, you'll adhere it to your fabric. You'll center it and stick it down. I like to use freezer paper when I'm working on this project because the glue really doesn't stick to it. If you use newspaper, you have a chance of the glue sticking to your newspaper and to your project. You'll want to use something to smooth out your fabric, any air bubbles or pockets of glue that might be under the fabric so that the top of it is smooth. And then you'll coat it with a layer of Mod Podge and smooth that out. You'll want to spread your Mod Podge out smoothly and evenly so it goes all the way to the edges of your wood. When you're finished smoothing out your Mod Podge, you'll let your project dry for several hours. When the fabric and glue have dried completely, we can trim off the extra fabric. 
You will want sharp scissors for doing this and you can just rest the scissors on the edge of the wood and work your way around the disc. It's easiest to cut these if the fabric is facing away from you. Once you have all of your ornaments cut out, you'll want to drill a hole so that you can hang them. You can put a hole just at the top of your ornament or you can put one at the top and the bottom of your ornament. It just depends on how you want to decorate these. After the holes are drilled and the string is in, I like to do a final coat of Mod, Mod Podge on both sides of the ornament so that it's protected and strong. I like to put the string in at this point so that I can hang the ornaments after I've put the Mod Podge on them and I don't have to lay them down. I Mod Podge both sides of the ornament and the edges to make sure everything is well stuck down. When you're done Mod Podging, you'll just hang your ornaments to dry and they're all finished. Project number two is resin keychains. For this project, you will need pet themed resin molds. If you've worked with resin before, you may have most of these items, but we'll go over what you need to do this project. You will definitely need some type of resin, and there's a lot of different kinds out on the market. You will need to read the material safety data sheet on your resin. Please take the safety precautions on your resin seriously as people have gotten sick from overexposure to resin vapors and contact with their skin. There are a lot of fun things you can add to your resin. I added mica powder to color the resin, Glitter to add sparkle, microbeads to add dimension, dried herbs to add a little color and texture, and a few buttons to just add something different. When working with resin, you will need a lot of cups and a lot of stirs. I find I like disposable the best, it just makes cleanup a lot easier. When working with small molds, it's hard to move them around when they're full of resin, so I like to put them in a shallow box in case I need to move them. Then if I spill any resin, it's contained in the box and I can throw the box away when I'm done the project. Before you mix your resin, you're going to want to be well organized. It's hard to fumble and open packages when you have gloves on, so you should get everything ready in advance. I decided that I wanted to put some button and beads in my mold, so I laid them out in advance. You will also want to get a level and level the surface that you're working on before you pull the, pour the resin because it will overflow your molds or you'll have uneven pours. If you're plan on, planning on adding stuff to your resin like glitter and dyes like mica powder, you'll want to get that ready in advance as well. You'll want everything pre-measured out so that things go smoothly. Once you start pouring the resin and you get it on your gloves, everything you touch will have resin on it. When you add things to resin, some things float and some things sink. To compensate for this, you can pour your resin in layers. For these keychains, I didn't want the backs of my buttons to show, so I poured a thin layer of clear resin, I put my buttons in there, and then I let it set for four to six hours. That way the buttons were stuck down in the resin. 
After that, I came back with a second layer of resin that was colored that would cover up the backs of the buttons. Ten minutes after I poured each layer of resin, I spritzed it with alcohol to break up the surface air bubbles. It's a good idea to cover up your resin while it's drying because little things get stuck in your resin, dust, lint, and small flies. I decided to try using these little silicone uh, muffin cups to mix up my resin and colorants in, but I really didn't like them. I don't really like having anything to clean up at the end. It's much easier, easier to use a disposable cup and just throw it away. So for the second layer of these keychains, I used orange glitter and orange mica, brown glitter and brown mica, two different shades of pink glitter and pink mica, and a blue mica and blue glitter, and some little micro beads that I put in there. I also did a yellow one, which I put some chamomile flowers in. Um, you'll see them in the next clip. It's a lot of fun to make these keychains, and it's easy to customize them for someone special in your life. Project number three, a paint pour with stenciling. For this project, you're going to need paint in different colors, wood plaques or canvases, any size you would like. I found these wood plaques at the dollar store, and they have a design on them, but you can just sand that down so that the paint sticks to it. Just give them a gentle sanding and uh, rough the surface up a little bit. I prefer the wood plaques for this project because they're a little easier to stencil on, but you can use a canvas or a wood plaque. It really doesn't matter. You will need white PVC glue and Floetrol flood. The Floetrol is important because for these pores it helps the paint glide across the surface. You don't need to buy the Floetrol by the gallon like I do. It comes in smaller containers. You won't need a gallon's worth. And you're going to need cups and stirrers so you can mix up the Floetrol and your paint. For this project you're going to want to pick three to four colors that would blend nicely together in a pour. Then you will want to prepare your paint. So here I'm getting my Floetrol, Floetrol measured down into all of my cups. We are going to mix four to five parts Floetrol with one part acrylic paint. Into my Floetrol, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of PVC glue. For this project, I have picked out three shades of blue and one shade of beige. I'm going to add one color of paint to each cup of Floetrol. Keeping in mind that I need about one part of paint to four to five parts of Floetrol. I normally just eyeball the ratio to paint to Floetrol and it works out well. You will measure out all your paint and then stir until it's evenly colored. You want your paint to flow off your stir. You don't want your paint to do, be too thick or too thin. If it's too thick, you can add a little bit of water. I mixed up all my paints and then I decided I needed a little white. It now looks like we're ready to paint. You will need to put something under your canvases so that the paint can flow off the sides. I'm going to start on the lower part with my beige and work my way up with white and the blues and make it look somewhat like a beach scene. Baby, you give me a 
Here I'm using the back of a paintbrush just to drag the colors around a little bit. There's a couple areas where I can see the canvas and I just want to make sure they're covered with paint. You don't want to fool with your piece too much because you might over mix it and make it look kind of muddy. Um, so it's best just to do a little bit and leave it alone. You will need to touch up the edges of your canvases a little bit because there may be areas that didn't get covered with paint. I try to just take some paint off the paper that's already dripped off that's about the same shade and put a little bit on the canvas. Since I have plenty of paint mixed up, I'm going to move on to a couple of mini canvases. I'm going to use the same technique I used before. I'm just going to start with my beige and move up with white and then my blues. If you have just one color of paint on your canvas, you can move it around with a paintbrush or stick to thin it out a little bit or to get it to run down the edges. Once you get a couple of colors of paint on the canvas, you really don't want to use a big object to move the paint around because you're going to smear it and blend it together, unless that is exactly what you want to do. I've decided to pick up this little canvas so that I could get the paint to run away from me. I wanted the beige area to be a little bit bigger.
You can definitely pick up your canvases and tilt them so that the colors run in the direction that you want them to run in. Here I've decided to add just a little more white. White paint seems to be heavier than other paints and sometimes when your piece dries your white will disappear. As your piece sits and dries, the paint is still going to move around a little bit and some of the paint will sink to the bottom while other colors seem to float. You might end up getting a piece that's slightly different than what you thought you were going to get when it dries. It's all good. It's a fun process to go through and you never really know how it's going to turn out until it's dry. You'll need to leave your canvases resting on a level surface to dry. This may take a couple days. It all depends on the humidity in your house. If you have paint left on your table, you can always dip a blank canvas into the paint and make a piece of art. You can end up with some beautiful pieces that took seconds to make. After about 30 minutes, you'll want to check on your canvases to see if there are big drips on the side. It's a lot easier to wipe them off now. Once the paint dries, you will have to cut the drips off with an X-Acto knife or sand them down with a piece of sandpaper. Once your canvases are dry and you've picked out some that you like, you can now stencil them. It is best if you tape your stencil down and tape off the area that you want to paint. This will protect your piece from accidents. Try to use a tape that's not too sticky. A really super sticky tape could actually pull your paint off. I stenciled the word love on this wood plaque and I let it dry completely and now I'm going to stencil this little dog on. Earlier in the video I mentioned that I like wood plaques better for this project um, and the reason being when you're stenciling you're pushing down on the canvas and the canvas will move. Uh, the wood plaque won't move on you and when the canvas moves you could get bleeding under the stencil. Uh, so you have to be extra ca careful when you're using a canvas because of the movement you're getting. Now I've decided to stencil a retriever on one of the beach scenes that I've done. Here is the retriever finished and dried. Here's the purple canvas we did earlier in the video. And here is a mini canvas that I, we painted on camera but I stenciled off camera. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe.